Is there a way where you can actually ensure success and profitability on Amazon? Well, in business, just like in life, nothing is guaranteed. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about four very important numbers that you need to constantly be checking in order to improve profitability and decrease loss. Are you ready? Let's get to work. Well, of course, going into business, you should have the mindset of whatever happens, I'm going to figure it out. That's what it means to be an entrepreneur. That's what it means to be a business person. And that's definitely the mindset needed to be an Amazon seller. In this video, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to be talking about four very main and important uh, costs that you need to constantly be checking in order to make sure that you are always profitable. And guess what? You can always make changes and tweaks in order to improve profitability and reduce any possible potential loss. Now, before we get started, let me do my intro. If this is your first time watching a video on this channel, hi, my name is Crystal and I'm the founder of Amazon Sellers Society and we help entrepreneurs, brands and businesses sell their products successfully on Amazon in the Middle East. We have memberships, courses, as well as business services, and you can find uh, all the information about everything on our website, www.assmiddleeast.org, and you can also book a consultation call with our team. As always, if you want to win a one-hour Zoom call with me where we can talk everything Amazon, all you really need to do is like this video, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell as well, and leave me a comment in the comment section below. Follow us on Instagram for daily inspiration, Amazon Sellers Society. Are you ready? Let's start with uh, metric number one. Again, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. Of course, there are a lot of numbers you need to look at you need to look at when you are in business, but for Amazon, let's keep it straightforward and let's talk about the cost of goods. Number 1, cost of goods. What are the cost of goods? Well, that's the cost of the units that you are going to be selling on Amazon. COG. Cost of goods potentially and normally it's going to be X works, especially if you are purchasing these products from anywhere outside of the UAE, KSA, or any marketplace that you are selling. So cost of goods is the raw cost of each unit that you are going to sell. Second thing is cost of shipping, which is also additionally very important because even if you are sourcing products in the same country that you are selling in, you still need to ship them to the FBA warehouse or you need to ship them from your supplier to or your your wholesaler let's say to whatever warehouse you are using so of course if you are internally shipping within the same country it's not going to be that expensive but shipping overseas is not only expensive is it's a little bit of a hassle so you might be doing DDP DAP and so many other terms but you need to combine cost of goods with cost of shipping to come up with cost of goods sold, which means the unit price delivered final end mile delivery all the way to the warehouse where it's going to be warehoused. And ideally, that's going to be in uh, Amazon. Some quick info about shipping. Usually a very confusing subject for anyone that's starting on Amazon. But let's start with the two main options. We've got the sea shipping, which is slow but inexpensive, and the air shipping, which is fast but somewhat expensive. Ideally, you want to choose DDP shipping no matter which method you decide to ship, which basically means that your products are going to be shipped from your manufacturer directly to customs in the country of origin, and then whatever shipping method is uh, appropriate for you, and then they will reach the customs in the country of your choosing, and then directly to to the Amazon warehouse to be sold to happy Amazon customers. Cost number three that you need to be also checking FBA or you need to take into consideration FBA. So fulfillment by Amazon. This cost is actually um, 
Probably, potentially, you're not, maybe you're not, you don't want to do FBA, but as you know, most successful sellers do choose FBA for a lot of reasons. First of all, it means you are sending your units over to the Amazon warehouse and they will fulfill the orders for you. So they will warehouse the product, they will pick it, they will pack it, they will send it to the customer, they will take care of customer service, and they will additionally take care of returns. So all of that is... Um, uh, is FBA and additionally your products will be prime eligible so the prime members the lovely Amazon prime members who are used to buying from Amazon at least on a weekly basis will potentially opt to purchase your product because it falls under their their prime membership which means they can get the product without having to pay any any delivery charges and even if the customers are not prime members the fact that your products are in the Amazon warehouse, it simply means that they will, by they I mean customers, will receive the product within 24 to a maximum 48 hours. And people obviously love fast delivery. Uh, we're living in a, um, you know, in, in a time where you want to purchase something and you don't want to wait, you want it straight away you want to start using it as soon as as humanly possible so that's why fba is an is a is an important it it's probably a very needed and necessary uh investment for your product but there is obviously a cost associated with it and fba fees are um related to the size volume weight of your product. That's how Amazon allocate a certain fee to your product. If you want to know a little bit more, um, I'll leave the FBA uh, schedule, the payment or the fee schedule, what is known as the fee schedule. I will leave it for you, AE and KSA. I will leave them both linked in the description box below. Now, fee number four, and very, very important, this is sometimes over overlooked, advertising. So advertising, this is a very important part of selling on Amazon. And remember, all of these figures are going to let us understand if you are being profitable or if you're losing money and what adjustments you can make. So advertising, you can easily kind of analyze it through the ACOS, the advertising cost of sale, which is very important because that ACOS percentage is kind of going to give you an idea. So let's assume that your profit margin is at 30% and your ACOS is also at 30%. That just basically means that you are breaking even. You are not losing any money, but you're still not making any money. However, if your margin, if your uh, profit margin is at 50% and your ACOS is at 30%, then you're making 20% in profit. And we're talking here net profit, of course. So that's how you roughly can estimate um, what your, how much money you're making and you can adjust accordingly. What I mean by that is, of course, when you're launching your product, your ACOS is going to be high. This is a new product. It hasn't ranked yet. Um, the conversion rate is going to be kind of low because you don't have any reviews. You don't have any history on Amazon. People have never seen this product before. So your ACOS tends to be high. But later on, when you are changing your advertising strategy, you need to make sure that you always look at this number because this number is going to change dramatically and should decrease the more time you spend on Amazon and the more your product is successful on Amazon. You can always make necessary changes like reducing the cost of goods. Whenever you want to do a reorder, you can re renegotiate with your supplier. You can additionally decrease the cost of shipping by opting to ship via C rather than ship via air. So you can adjust, pivot and change all of these numbers, but uh, you need to know what these numbers are and you need to track them in order to figure out if you are profitable or if you're not profitable to the level that you want to be. The last tip that I can give you is related to micro launching. By that, I mean, I'm not sure if you've heard it before, but micro launching or doing a micro launch is also very important because it just signifies that you are not spending your investment on units. Don't fall for what suppliers tell you, you know, you need to purchase a thousand or you need to purchase 500 units. All of those are great. And yes, of course, you're going to get a much better return on investment when you invest in high quantities. But 
you're not going to really know if the product is going to be successful unless you start. And if you start with a high number of units, and if the product doesn't move and doesn't sell as quickly as you want, then your full investment is put on one product and you're not going to have the cash flow in order to reinvest in other potentially better products maybe. So make sure that you always micro launch, meaning you start with 200, 300 units, maximum 400 units, maximum, and you test out the product and make sure that it is successful or it has the momentum, the sales momentum as the, like you want and like you, that, what, that you want and that you want in the future. And then you can reinvest in that potential product and get some more units and be able to reduce your cost of goods, your cost of shipping and everything else and be even more profitable. That's it for this video. Make sure that you leave a thumbs up, you subscribe to the channel and you hit the notification bell. And I will see you in another video with more information. Bye.